Uh, the next major principle is backwards compatibility. And this, there's a couple different aspects of this. Uh, your website, of course, should be backwards compatible with uh, older browsers. Um, so your code, uh, in terms of code, should be compatible with older technology. Um, and of course, the, the, uh, the importance of the technology decreases as it gets older and as its user base decreases. Um, something like Internet Explorer 2 probably doesn't matter if your website works in Internet Explorer 2 because nobody's going to be using that. <laughs> Very, very few people are going to be using that. If you, and uh, if they did, they probably are used to having broken websites. Um, but you can't think about it just in terms of your user base because um, it may be that, like you may say, oh, none of my users use Internet Explorer. Well, maybe it's because your website breaks in Internet Explorer. It's sort of like if none of your customers use wheelchairs, that doesn't mean that you don't have to install a ramp. It might mean that you do need to install a ramp so that some of your customers, uh, you know, you may, may have been losing customers who haven't been able to access your store with the, without the ramp. Same sort of thing. So if your website, uh, if you're just looking at statistics and say, oh, my users don't, don't need this, I'm not going to support it, uh, that's sort of a fallacy. <laughs> uh, you need to try and support as many things as possible. So the other aspect of backwards compatibility is in terms of uh, increasing the technology. So new versions of languages, new user agents, and, uh, and things like this uh, are designed to not break old stuff. So when Internet Explorer 8 came out, it was a big thing that uh, people were worried it was going to break the web because it was going from the buggy implementation in the broken box model to correcting it and being more standards compliant, which was really great. But um, all the people that have been coding for the old broken ways in Internet Explorer, suddenly their websites wouldn't work in Internet Explorer 8, and it was called breaking the web. <laughs> um, and it sort of is a conflict because on the one hand, it's increasing its adherence to standards and making the web more interoperable. But on the other hand, it was uh, making poorly coded websites not able to uh, continue working in Internet Explorer without additional uh, hacks. So they put up, that's why you'll see in IE8, there's a little button that you can press to toggle to IE7 mode and IE8 mode because they don't want to break the web. They wanted it to still work. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of a, a terrible solution, but hopefully we will not have to deal with that uh, for much longer. But uh, just that's just to illustrate that um, if you are coding according to a standard, um, then browser vendors and new versions of languages are going to have in mind the way that you've been coding, and they'll they'll uh, try as best they can to keep your code that was coded correctly from uh, working, even with the advances in technology. So it's good not to do like tricky things or broken things. Don't write tag soup, etc. Um, XHTML2 was not backwards compliant, and because of that, nobody wanted to use it, and it failed, and they had to stop using. They had to stop developing it, and uh, XHTML2 never took off for that reason. Uh, so this this right here is the uh, uh, tag that you can put in your website if it breaks in Internet Explorer 8, but uh, worked in Internet Explorer 7. They had to kind of create this meta tag. <laughs> um, and this makes your website work in IE7 as if it's IE7. Uh, so it's, uh, it wasn't completely backwards compatible, so they had to go to great lengths to make it work. Uh, 